Okay, by the end of this video, I'm going to tell you a tip which is absolutely free and is probably not going to cost you much money to implement that could save your playing. I think this has been an important part of my development. It's going to sound super weird to start off with, but I'm going to tell you why playing in front of a mirror, I think has been a really good idea. channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So I can remember going to university was the first time that I'd interacted with a guitar teacher and there was another person on the course who basically found out on that day that there were problems with his technique, the way he was playing that basically he had never really realised because he was also self-taught and it was quite demoralising for the chap and I think it, it kind of put him off in some regards especially like I think at the age of like 18, 19 you've already been, been maybe playing seven for, for me personally like 10 years and you feel like you've you know got a lot of things under your belt whether that's true or not is, is another point altogether. Um, but to be told that you're doing things fundamentally wrong, I think is kind of a bit of a like, uh, oh no, type situation. How would you know this sort of thing if you didn't have a teacher? I think a lot of us are self-taught these days, myself personally. So I started playing guitar at eight. I had piano lessons from about the age of five. I stopped those at 14, but took myself, essentially when I was 16, I did grade eight guitar. And then at university was the first time that I had a couple of lessons with Stuart Ryan, who used to teach on the course um, in Bath. Now, there's a lot of that sort of time developing guitar, which completely unsupervised and without anyone pointing out stuff, 
I think there's definitely uh, a, a huge opportunity there for, for people to go, uh, right, and just form bad habits, essentially. And, you know, people ask me, do I give lessons and stuff? That's part of the reason for me why I don't like to give kind of one-on-one -on -one lessons too much, because I feel like um, I don't necessarily have much wisdom for you guys anyway, <laughs> given that I just sort of spent time in my bedroom sort of bumbling along until whatever happened. Um, but also I think there's some element for me where guitar is just about kind of a journey for me, which has been basically myself in a room. So that's kind of it, but I can share some insights if I have them. So my room has basically always been pretty much the same setup. I've been thinking about this now and thinking about how this happened. And this room here is actually the first time that it's not quite like that. So in my house as a kid, um, I started off in this kind of back room of the house, which I think was added on later. And I moved out of that room because it had some damp issues and I was kind of an ill kid growing up. And then I moved into this other room. And somehow, so the computer desk would be like it was in this room over here, I think at one point at least. And there would be a mirror just by the door, like a full length mirror. And I could sit or stand and watch myself in the mirror play. Um, this would have been before I was filming stuff, before any of that. But I think for a lot of the time that I would have been, you know, practicing technique stuff and shred stuff, when I started to get serious about guitar, there would have been a mirror just there um, in that room where I also moved in a, like 2007. There's a full length mirror along the wall there so I could kind of sit and see what was going on technique wise. Obviously, these are mirrors here. Um, and then another house that I had, um, Liana, my wife, used to have a full length mirror for getting ready. And again, that would be positioned sort of next to the door. Um, my computer to the side of it and I could be able to sit in front of it and see what was going on with my hands. Now, why I think this has been useful is for a few reasons and maybe why you might consider this to be something that might be worth doing, even if it is creepy. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But first of all, it, if you're looking ahead instead, in terms of posture and health, there's probably benefits to having your head like that instead of focused on the fretboard, right? So I think I've heard from David Beebe, Tom Quayle, people like that, um, about sort of health issues that have arisen due to posture. Um, and obviously guitar like this with a weight going across here and you're facing across kind of hyper-focused on your hand for extended lengths of time can be a thing which is a bit risky posture-wise. So for me, having a mirror, I think this would have been a benefit in terms of health, right? So you'd be looking ahead instead of down the whole time. Okay, so that's one possible benefit. The other benefit is instead of my head always being like this and wedded to being on the fretboard, I'm kind of looking around a bit more and not always looking at what my hands are doing. Um, and that's another thing which later on in life, I think when people are, you're playing in bands and stuff like that and or performing, well, making eye contact is super important, whether it's with your band or the audience, all of that sort of stuff. Either way, being able to take your hand off of the fretboard and what you're doing can be a real benefit. But one, one other small thing is that having a mirror in a room kind of makes the room feel bigger. It kind of adds an extra dimension to it. But the other thing is that you can sort of see if there are things that are looking unnatural or, or not. So at the time, of course, as I say, I'm not filming my playing particularly. Um, and so, you know, having that view outside of yourself where you can see what is happening is really beneficial because you can see, right, well, it looks to me like I'm sort of flapping about a lot or it looks to me like I'm really tensing up. You can see some of these things and, you know, practice those things that people talk about, whether it's Tom Bukovac, um, more recently talking about, you know, playing with less tension. I think playing in front of a mirror, as weird as it sounds, can help to illuminate where there might be some things that you're doing that maybe does or does not look right. And normally if something looks smooth or effortless or these kind of words is when the technique is kind of right and flowing, right? And it is more difficult to get, you know, you see some people with a thumb sort of 
totally under the neck and that sort of stuff. The sort of techniques where you think, well, how did that development, how did that develop or, you know, weird picking angles. If you can look at yourself and see, ah, okay, well, this is a particularly unnatural looking position. And instead of hyper-focusing on, you know, the fretboard right here, be thinking, okay, well, what does it look like from the outside? I think a mirror is a really good way to do that. Um, and kind of doesn't have the same pressure elements as turning on a camera and recording, which I think has its own benefits in terms of seeing how you play and being able to analyze stuff, but brings in additional kind of stresses and pressures around the idea of like playing well, the red light syndrome, stuff like that. So that's my idea for a tip that is sounding strange, but I think is actually pretty solid advice. Um, I think certainly something I'm pretty sure was a big part of my practice in terms of just, you know, making sure that there weren't any real nasty surprises. Let me know if you think that's a good idea or not, uh, or if that would have helped. If you've heard anyone else say this sort of thing, it might have been the sort of thing that I've heard people talk about when I was younger. I've not really heard people talk about it more recently, but certainly I think if you can have a mirror in front of you whilst you're playing, it's the sort of thing where you're going to spot things a lot better than just super hyper focusing on the fretboard. Let me know your thoughts on that. Cheers for stopping by. Oh, and if this was at all, you know, fun, helpful, useful, creepy, feel free to use the buy me a coffee link uh, if you, you think you're getting any use out of some of the stuff that I'm talking about on this channel. Um, I'm trying to make it sort of fun and entertaining, sort of entertaining and sometimes in focus. So cheers.